I love Excel's new checkboxes feature. In this video, we'll take a look at 19 different ways to use them. Everything from a simple checklist to interactive charts. And I'll also explain an important change since their initial beta release. So let's get to it. So the first way we can use the new checkboxes feature is with a simple checklist. Here I have a list of items that I'm gonna need to pack for vacation. I'm just gonna select the cells next to it here, go to the insert tab and click the new checkbox button. And that's going to insert these checkboxes into each cell. And these are interactive, so we can click on these to check the checkbox and click it again to uncheck it. You can also use the space bar here to check and uncheck. And I'll make this file available for free download and put a link in the description below where you can download it and follow along. And I'll talk more about the availability of these new checkboxes at the end of the video. So if you're not seeing the checkbox button yet, it's probably because it's not yet released to your version of Excel. And we can also change the color of the checkboxes by simply changing the font color. We'll do that here on the home tab. So maybe we want a nice blue color. As we check the checkbox, it will also fill with that same color. Here's another example with a Christmas gift list. And one nice feature of checkboxes is when the checkbox is checked, that puts a true value into the cell. We can see it right up here in the formula bar. If the checkbox is unchecked, then there's a false value in the cell. And what this means is that we can use formulas and conditional formatting to do some really cool things with checkboxes. So one example here is we'll just select all of these cells. I'm gonna go up to the home tab and we'll apply some conditional formatting. We'll say highlight cell rules when this is equal to Right in here, we'll just type the value of true. And as you can see, the checkboxes that are checked because they have that true value will be highlighted. We have a light fill with a red, I'm sorry, light red fill with dark red text. If we just wanted red text, we could do that, hit okay. And now as we interact with these checkboxes and check them off, they turn into red text, which just makes them easier to see. And the nice part about conditional formatting is the formatting is not permanent. When we uncheck the box, that of course changes the cell value and reverts the formatting back. And as I mentioned, we can also use checkboxes with formulas. So in this example here, we have an expense report and we wanna split this amount when the checkbox is checked. So we can see this total amount here is split in half. To do this, I'm just using a simple if formula to say if the checkbox is checked or if it's true, if E4 is true, then we're going to divide the amount by two. If not, we're just gonna return the full amount. So this is an easy way or a way to make your spreadsheets easier so users don't have to necessarily know how to do this math. They can just come in here and check a checkbox and the math will be done for them. Another great use for checkboxes is to highlight rows so we can compare them. By just checking the checkbox here, the entire row is highlighted and that just makes it easy to make comparisons or draw attention to these different rows. To do this, we're gonna use conditional formatting. We'll first select the top left cell in the table. I'm gonna hit Control A to select all the cells in the table. Go up to the Home tab here and conditional formatting, we're gonna choose a new rule. We're going to use a formula, and this is a very simple formula. We're gonna take equals, and then just select the cell in the top left corner of the table, which is B4. I'm gonna hit the F4 key on the keyboard three times to make the column absolute, so it doesn't change as the formula is applied across, but the row number will change, so that's relative. Format, and then select our fill color. I'll just choose this uh, pink or purple color for now, hit OK. And now we can see again as the checkbox is checked, that fill color will be applied to the entire row. And another way we can compare rows is with filtering. So let's say we want to compare these three rows. Since the checkboxes contain a true or false value, we can just filter for true values only, and we'll now see all of those rows next to each other. Of course, we can clear the filters here to see everything again. One little pro tip here on this filtering, if you're way down or you're not near the filter dropdown menu, you can just right click on any cell that contains the checkbox there, filter and filter by selected cells value, and that will filter for all the true values. Here's another example where we can use conditional formatting to format other cells by applying this gray font color. I have another example here where when we check an item off, the font color is turned gray for the current item, and then the next item is highlighted, and this just helps draw attention to it to help us know which step we're on. For this next example, I have this list of orders and there are a specific number of line items on each order. I can click the details checkbox to show those line items or those products for that order. If we look at this one, there's five line items and we can see all five of those products listed here. Now this is using a combination of conditional formatting and a pretty advanced formula here to make this happen. It's really using the filter function to look up and return the line items from this sheet 
over here. And then we're also using the uh, VStack, expand, xmatch, and let functions to make all this happen. I can do a separate video on this, so leave a comment below if you'd like to learn more about this technique, and I'll explain it in more detail. Oh, and if you're wondering what happens when two checkboxes are checked, I currently have a nice message here letting you know that you can only check one checkbox at a time, but of course there are a lot of possibilities here. And here's another example of that same technique where we have a customer list and we'll have the names and phone numbers that we have for that customer appear when we click the info or show details checkbox. And this technique can also be used to show details of a chart. Here I have the source data for the chart along with some other information for quantity and totals. And this is just using conditional formatting. So when the checkbox is false, the uh, fill, font, and borders will be turned to white or not shown. Next, we're going to look at how to count the number of checked checkboxes. For this, we're going to use a formula. I'm going to type equals count if here to use the count if function. For our range, we're just going to select all the cells that contain checkboxes. For the criteria, we're going to put a true because the checked checkboxes contain a true value. Hit enter, and that will return the count. And of course, as we check items here and uncheck them, the count will automatically update. If you want to see the number of unchecked items, instead of a true here, you can just put a false, and that will calculate the unchecked items. And another popular use for checkboxes is an attendance tracker like this. One kind of pro tip here if you're doing attendance is you can select all of these cells that contain checkboxes and then hit the space bar on the keyboard to check them. You can hit space bar again to uncheck them. But what I'm gonna do is hit space to check them. And then as I go through this list, I will just uncheck any absences and this will just save you a few clicks. Another element that's kind of synonymous with checklists is progress bars. So here we have uh, two different types of progress bars. We have the donut chart or just a regular bar chart. Both of these are just Excel uh, charts. And as we check items on the list here, that's going to update some formulas that will then update the chart. The source data and those formulas is right over here. It's just counting the complete and incomplete items, again, with that count if formula. I have a separate video that covers progress charts in more detail. I'll link that up in the description below. Oh, and if you're wondering how I rounded the corners on this bar chart here, this is just a shape. It's a rounded rectangle with a white border and no fill. And I just placed it over the corners of the bar chart there to give it that rounded look. And one common question is, do the new checkboxes work in Excel tables? The answer is yes. And when checkboxes were in beta, they had a bug where they didn't extend down, but that has been fixed. So if we add some new data to the bottom of the table, I'll just copy this data here, and I'm gonna paste it to the bottom of the table, the table automatically extends, the checkboxes are copied down into the new blank rows, and they are all unchecked. This next technique I call the secret reveal. As boxes are checked here, items are revealed in the list. And this can be great if you wanna get your audience to pay attention during a presentation or a meeting because they might be curious as to which item will be revealed next. This technique just uses conditional formatting and when the checkbox is unchecked or false, the font color is set to white. And this is a similar technique that I call the invisible reveal, where I've just changed the font color of the checkboxes to white, but you can still interact with them, and this just gives it a cleaner look where you don't see the checkboxes. Another way to measure progress with checklists is with calendars. Here I have a calendar chart and a uh, checklist here. As I check these items on the list, that's going to light up or highlight that date on the calendar. The calendar is interactive here, so we can change months as well. And then as we have these list of dates down here, we can go check these off and see those on the calendar. I have a separate video that explains the setup of this in more detail, and I'll link that up in the description below. And here's another variation of a calendar chart. This one's done all with formulas in cells. And as we check the items here, of course, we have some conditional formatting. We also have conditional formatting that applies uh, when an entire week is highlighted here or checked off. And we get a little reward at the end of the week for our kids' chores. Sometimes with your solutions, you'll want the user to be able to quickly reset all of the checkboxes. Unfortunately, there's no built-in way to do that. Now you could use a macro, but instead of using a macro, what I've done here is just created a hyperlink to a range here to select all of these cells. And once all of the cells are selected, we can just hit the space bar on the keyboard to uncheck or hit space bar again to check all of the items. Now there are formulas and cells here within this selection, but as long as the selection starts with a checkbox, when you hit spacebar, it's going to control all of the checkboxes within the selection. 
And here's another example where I'm using an image of a checkbox to again hyperlink to this range and select the range. And again, hitting spacebar will check or uncheck all. And finally, in this example, I'm using a checkbox to hide or show chart data. So here we have revenue versus budget. If we wanted to hide budget to just focus on revenue, we can uncheck the checkbox and then check the checkbox to bring it back. The way this is set up is I'll uh, use my reveal technique here to show the source data for the chart. In this column right here, I have a formula that's using the if function to again, just say if that checkbox is true, we're going to return the budget data from column P. If not, we're going to return an NA error. And when we return that NA error, the chart will not plot any of the data here because it's just returning an error. And a few final tips for checkboxes. Checkboxes, when you insert them, are center aligned by default, but you can left or right align them. You can also use these uh, vertical alignment options up here. If you want to delete your checkboxes, you can just hit the delete key on the keyboard. Now, if you have some of the checkboxes checked, when you hit delete the first time, it's just going to uncheck those checkboxes and then hit delete again, and it will clear out the checkboxes. When checkboxes were first released in beta, there was a ghosting feature when you deleted checkboxes, but that has been removed. And in terms of availability, checkboxes have finally been released to the production version of Excel. This blog post from Microsoft talks more about it, and I'll link this up in the description below. At the bottom here, it talks about availability. As of July 31st, 2024, all users on the current channel for Microsoft 365 for Windows and Mac should have checkboxes. Web and mobile are still being rolled out, and then of course the other channels will follow. Unfortunately, checkboxes are not going to be backwards compatible. So if a user on an older version of Excel opens one of your files where you've used checkboxes, they're just going to see a list of true and false values in cells like this. So when you're using checkboxes, make sure the users of your file will also be on a version of Excel that supports checkboxes. So I hope this video inspires you to find new and creative ways to bring life to your spreadsheets with checkboxes. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button and consider subscribing. And please leave a comment below if you'd like me to do a separate video that explains any of these techniques in more detail. And if you wanna learn more about conditional formatting, then check out this video next. Thanks again for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.